We have an episode with Mark Cabana. Uh, we put it out today. It's a very special day for the bond market. Mark Cabana is the rate strategist for Bank of America. Amazing guy. Long time yes, rate totally strategist. Agree. We have three big things happening this week. So we have the quarterly refunding announcement from Treasury. We have the Fed meeting. We also have jobs data. And so it's a big week for rates. Okay, but Who maybe, better to back speak up, to? Let's yep. resell. You're 100 percent right. Cabana's a superstar. Read his note cover to cover. Jobs day. Nobody cares. It's like every <laughs> week. Okay. Dude, Joe's Fed. right I'll be here. There. I'll can't be there that today. In front of me. I'll be there today. The Fed, it's going to be a snooze fest. No one listening or watching on YouTube worldwide knows what a treasury refunding is. Joe, why is today so important for this odd this federal This hurts me thing? in so many ways. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Of the three, uh, uh, the Treasury funding is probably, in a way, the le the most arcane and the least relevant to people. I mean, look, the Fed, by and large, sets the path of rates via its policy and the forward guidance it gives in terms the so-called reaction function. The uh, re It reacts to data, and that's what we'll get Friday with jobs, and there's some anxiety about a weakening labor market, cooling, hiring. And then maybe at the margin, the mix of, like, bills and notes and bonds. That's what the today's trade. about. That's what we got. I don't. And I, Lisa Bromitz is I was all happy uh, about this. She's all wait, you know the other it. thing that's actually happening today? I nearly forgot, and this might turn out oh. to be more interesting. It's month end. And the last oh, yeah. time we had a month end, we had a little bit of drama in the money market, yeah. in the repo market. And so this is one thing, you know, you have the Treasury refunding, you have a Fed decision, you have the month end. You could actually see some weirdness in the plumbing of the financial system. And that yeah. could end up feeding into the conversation that we see from the Fed about how it's going to wind down its balance sheet, QT, all of that. I don't know, month end, I just check my checking account make sure my paycheck hit <laughs> that's the big news so i mean you guys have a widely successful podcast odd lots tracy what do you guys what's your focus on odd lots what do you try to do every week uh, we try to avoid having any focus at all. That's why we okay. call it all lots. <laughs> no, we basically go from thing to thing that interests us. So uh, today we have Cabana talking about all this, uh, you know, financial wonkery deep in the system of, of finance. Tomorrow we're going to have Sal Mercogliano. He's a maritime historian. How often do you do Odd Lots podcast? Two or three times a week. Okay, okay. And Sal is talking about the escalating crisis in the Red Sea and how that's yep. impacting global trade and also the history of the U.S. Navy and its role in protecting commerce so we go from thing to thing as it's interesting and as it's relevant because we had admiral stravitas a couple days oh, yeah. ago with a yeah, yeah, Talk to him. Him. yeah which was very yeah. very aggressive colin we had him on air and he says he makes no bones about it we need to step up and be more aggressive so that's interesting hey joe we got the adp data today yeah. do i care about adp or do i wait to, for, for friday which i know is the you know the big thing ADP is like a guilty pleasure because we all know that it has almost no predictive capacity okay, for NFP, but it's there. Okay. We can't help looking at it. Our human brains can't help because but extrapolate it weaker, a little. It was a little weaker than expected. Again, I do not believe anyone has ever found consistent signal. They've even tried trading the, changing the methodology a few years ago. It, but we can't help it. We're going to extrapolate from it, even if history says not to. The, bl the blue light's over here. Yeah. It's Detroit Lions blue. I understand that. What, what's interesting to me in this, tying all this together, is the ambiguity, the economic, microeconomics, the ambiguity right now of where the nominal 10-year yield is. Mm. Is the 10-year yield a symbol of a good economic America? Or is a 10-year yield a symbol of bad Fed policy? That seems to be the debate. <clears throat> that is a debate. I mean, look, we spent... <clears throat> 10 years complaining about, oh, rates are so low, it's broken. And then we flipped and people are like, oh, rates are so high, it's broken. I mean, it feels like we've gotten out between Fed and fiscal policy of a very long way, you know, Larry Summer is secular stagnation. Mm -hmm. uh, that right. seems good. People didn't like that. People didn't, people had, I don't know, maybe people now missed the ZERP and like, oh, actually, what were, okay. were we complaining about? But uh, it seems, seems not bad. People think, you know, that we're having him in here to talk about Mark Cabana, who I adore. He's really world class in the odd lots thing. But we've got to take the rest of the time we've got with why we really booked them today. Tracy Alloway has done the flight from Tokyo like oh. 400 <laughs> times, lived really? there, the whole thing. You know, I remember it's, flying between Tokyo and the U.S. when you could still smoke on airplanes. Yeah, that, that's yeah. Oh, I think I would yeah. have been like eight years old. You probably saw Bon Jovi in 1988 when, in, in Tokyo. But Taylor's got to fly. First of all, she's got to drive to Narita. 
Maybe she goes to Haneda. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but that's... when you hear that she's got a dash back for the Super Bowl, how do you respond, <laughs> oh, experienced one? I wish her the best of luck. Uh, add lots of time for that Narita commute because it's pretty uh, It's like the it's worst pretty in the world. Hellish. Have you ever done it? But she has a private plane, doesn't oh, she? I'm sure she's going to take that. She's in I a was... helicopter. I mean, Look. she's going to Sikorsky out like Paul does. It'll be know. fine. I'm really, I'm not that concerned about Taylor Swift's logistics. She'll work it out. Really? And she will front uh, center for sports talk radio. You know, I'm all about supply chains and supply chain vulnerabilities and transport weaknesses. But I think Taylor will. So are you are you paying attention to this the Red Sea stuff? Because I go to Maps Go all the time. Map Go on the Bloomberg. Liz Goldenberg. I don't see a lot of boats going through the Suez Canal or the Red Sea these days. No, this is exactly what we uh, speak to um, with Sal Mercogliano, the maritime historian, about, and he made some amazing points, including that, you know, it's not just that the ships aren't able to go through the Suez Canal, it's that it kind of has a compounding factor because it takes them so much yep. longer to go to unload that like one ship that's not able to go down to the Suez is equivalent to like five ships not able to go down to the Suez or it's five boatloads of stuff that's being delayed. And so it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The really interesting thing he said is he expects that we're going to see an impact here in the U.S. in early February. It like takes soon. Soon. Yeah. It takes a while to work its way through the system. So far, it's been mostly affecting Europe and China, but it's coming. 